Oh, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Cheesy boots. Jeez. I'm dead. <laughs> welcome, everyone, to the second session of Fate, the Rise of Madness. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, report, oh. as it were, Ow. that mm -hmm. my lovely wife is here. Say hello, Melanie. Hello. She is going to be playing Harriet, the Sasquatch. <laughs> we'll get to that. I like Harry and the Hendersons. I was going to say, we just didn't Okay, I just got that. That's, that's <laughs> exactly no, got that. where that's from, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll get to that way. when we do. <clears throat> um, There's a pad for that chair, Will. It was yes. on the floor. Oh, well, cool. If you want that, Thanks, just set it down or use it. Cule beans. Here's how we're going to open, though. Hang on, i got to get ready up. Um, we're going to be s implementing something else as well. Uh, something that I read about in the DMG, and I thought it was cool. Um, and I really like it, and we're going to try it and see how it works. Is it in that DMG? Yes. Cool. Uh, it is. And it is something called plot points. Uh, if you want to make a note somewhere, everyone will have one plot point. <laughs> what that will do, you can spend this plot point in a variety of ways. Uh, one way that you can spend it is to give yourself advantage on a roll that you don't normally have advantage on. Um, you can use it to create an, advan an advantageous um, plot device, uh, like, I don't know, use your imagination on that. I, I have to okay it, of course. I yeah, but something to can like, really... I'm going to spin a plot point and a boulder falls and kills whatever I'm fighting. <laughs> yeah, no. plot point, I find a wish card on the ground. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Uh, but we can, you know, most of the time I imagine it will likely be used to just give yourself... So you, it's a one-time use luck point or uh, uh, or like you can oh, add I, some nice detail to this plot line that right, would like, be really oh, convenient if oh this guy's like here with all this like, money like, like for example you can say I, I want to spend my plot point to um, I know an example to, to I'm going to spend my so plot point there's a magic item at the shop that I want okay. I'm going to spend my plot, plot point to get a uh, my sword back as soon as possible uh, well, you already have your sword. Yeah. But something, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Like, I want to spend a pot point so that I don't have to roll to successfully hide my weapon yeah. when we're going to this town that bans weapons. Or whatever. Yeah. Things like that. You cool. can do that. Um, we're going to try it out. Yeah. See how it goes. Use it. Um, we'll figure it out. Yes. You're the boss. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, my wife said I could be. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Recap. This is important. I actually wrote a little bit of something here. Uh, after getting a sword repaired by Krishna, Finn and Krishna go into the joyous Lepus, the tavern, where you guys work. Turk challenges Finn to an arm wrestling match, uh, which Finn very handily wins. Yeah. And a bar fight ensues, because Turk doesn't like losing. <laughs> Uh, Quetzal stabs the woman no, who's, whose name. Hold up, let's let's, let's name, tell the whole tale. Whose name let's is not, not, Mara Kilch. Let's not leave out these details here. Who so attacks oh, him God. with a bottle? Thank you. Uh, he stabs her through the neck, killing her in the bar. Yeah. Okay. Kane uses the distraction to kill the bartender, uh, completing his first kill for a number. After a lengthy jury jury trial, Quetzal is stripped of his weapons and is banished from Fissian. The town. The name of the town. Which will burn. Uh, <laughs> the other members of the group agree to escort him out and accompany him to Isarod to look into the disappearances. Isarod is a different town. Uh, closely trailed by Cain. On their first night out, the group is ambushed by five uh, bandits, in quotes, members of the Kilch family seeking revenge for their dead family members. They do manage to kill Quetzal. 
and almost kill Krishna, if I recall correctly. And me. And you. I almost got a TPK in my first session. <laughs> because of you. But the surviving two female members Bitch flee the, the scene after some gruesome death of one of them by Finn. That's still good. I just yeah. showed up. <laughs> That's just, all I had to like do. rushed in and cut a dude in half. And yeah. All right. The opening scene here, where we are beginning, is not on the material plane. Quetzal is standing before a voluptuously curvy woman in black robes with a skull for a face. Hmm. I'm conflicted. Standing easily, she is standing easily 20 feet tall. Around her is a room that seems to be made of bone. The floor, the walls, the decor all showcase bones and other death-like motifs. Greetings, Quetzal. She says, her voice low and sultry. Welcome to Myrtis. Specifically, my primary chambers, where I judge those who have died. You are dead. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> I assume <laughs> such. <laughs> you are destined to do more. Your life is interwoven in the very fate of our town itself. You must continue in your journey. But there are consequences for actions. Okay. Your kill resulted in your death. Yep. Every decision in your life has consequences, even your next decision. A death for a death. The veil must be maintained. You must choose. And you are presented with three visions. The first shows a centaur woman moving through the forest, teaching her young daughter. The name that enters your mind is Ulidia Forest Walker. The second shows an elderly goblin reading a book next to his wife and children. The name that enters your mind is Glass Steel. G-L-A-S Steel. Okay. The third shows a pengu, which is a penguin person, uh, tending a pond full of fish in a small village. The name that enters your mind is Rhea Seaweaver. Chaldea eyes you. You, while not intimately familiar with religion, Chaldea and religion, understand that this is the goddess of death. Yep. <clears throat> That's one you know. <laughs> choose a life for a life. Uh, the goblin. The goblin. He's old. Lives a Glass you know, old age. He's probably, you know, done goblin shit and kill people. And all <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what goblins do here. But They're master smiths. I would tell them too. <clears throat> but yeah, he's old. He's an old dude. He lived a full life. He's probably one of the best smiths in the world. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know that. You picked the goblin already, by the way. Can you make me a fork before I kill him? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Kill the goblin. That is your decision. So be it. <clears throat> so, your vision shifts back to the room. And... Um, the old goblin... Is not the one that falls dead. <laughs> I no, it's cool. Sons of bitch. This is terrible. Oh, the other is probably dead. It, it is his child. wife. Oh. Yeah, oh, she's good. probably old too. Long as it wasn't her kid. That's fine. Um, there is Same a <laughs> surprised and shocked expression, followed by weeping goblins. Chattanooga Confusion. Uh, it's not. It's not a good. Okay. Yeah. You um, the woman the goblin woman appears uh, next to you. Although it doesn't seem like she can see you, only Kaldia. Kaldia addresses you again. When I call upon you, you will answer. Okay. 
Okay, no. <laughs> back where you guys are. Um, back on the material plane. Uh, we were around the campsite. Krishna, Crowley, and Finn. Uh, <clears throat> Quetzal's not breathing. Yeah. It has been pierced by me. Crossbow bolts. What do you do? My key is very evidently dead. Out of character, take his stuff. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything. The guards already took yeah. all my shit. Yeah. Um, we got that wings to pin up. No. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, boy. Um, I do have my handy spice pouch. You can season me up ship. nicely. Nice irony. Just gotta, I mean, I would at least does, make him. Does he a, have wings? No. No, he has like feathers. He's like a person. Give me perception checks, everybody. Um, I wanted to make a medicine check as soon as the fight ended. Oh, him sure. To, like, try and okay. help him out or see like can... how dead he is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I won't even make dead. you roll for that. <laughs> yeah, he's very dead. Yeah, he's, he's dead. very dead. He's very dead. All right, I think well, he might be alive because I got one. Perception <laughs> check. <laughs> he's wild. Uh, walking yeah. off. My boy blue. Uh, eight. Eight. <clears throat> Two. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I, I have a plus three. Uh, but yeah, I rolled a five. Gotcha. <laughs> We're gonna, okay, that's fine. Uh, this will be evident to all of you. We'll just, just yeah. have... <laughs> Passive I'm not 13. in that direction, dude. I got a nat one on my perception. <laughs> that's fair. You don't notice it, but, um... Magically, if you will, yeah, um, you see the crossbow bolts get pushed out. Like they just kind of glow with a blue like artekish color, like just... Wolverine style. They're kind of pushed out, just... and there is a glow, a blue glow, like that of healing magic or around him. Um, well, healing magic. Yeah, you. None of you have seen uh, like death recovery magic. But I might have seen Revivify have. in the heat of the moment, you but that be it. But most, I'll say this, yeah. um, most of you have never seen this particular... No, we've probably not seen this kind of, of magic at all. So. The ritual, mm. action, ritual. There's a there's a pause. And then from Quetzal. It's <gasps> <laughs> 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 immediately screams. I'm just, I'm Jesus, just dude! Sword, like, you gotta yell! <laughs> yeah. Are you okay? I don't want to be like, brain... <laughs> should we get him? Uh, he should not be alive. I mean, he's. Is he gonna fight me? I'm not gonna fight someone that's not gonna fight me. Um. You have one hit point. You're alive. Whoa. And uh, you are in. You have much hit points as I do. Alive. <laughs> Let me make a note that you chose. The goblin. The goblin. Yeah, I'm gonna kill a fucking penguin. <laughs> um, the centaur. Who's this ten years old The goblin was reading to his child. He was old. He was an old motherfucker. This is time. <laughs> his wife's time. She was old. She was older in this year. Like the movie Up. Have <laughs> to put balloons on his house spotlight. Okay, so. <clears throat> How do I want this to be? So you have a long rest at this point. Mm -hmm. You can rest the rest of the night and have your long rest. Yep. Um, I need that. Which, Finish camping. Which, which returns you to full health, and you would regain half of your hit dice if you spent any, but I don't, I don't think it'd be We only have one. Well, then you would regain your hit dice. <laughs> We're level one. Right. Int. Indeed. <clears throat> okay. Actually, I think I still make it work. It'll just be... Clank will just be NPC mode. Yeah. At the moment. All right. After this scene, we're going to sort of cut away uh, to a cave 
near the foothills of the Dragon Claw Mountains. Um, Harriet and Clank, which is Tommy's character. He's a robot man. He's a robot. He's a robot. Basically. Um, you, you had ultimately ended up joining the Adventurer's Guild out of a need for coin. Money. Right? Because you, you need money to survive, really. Mm -hmm. um, life you, needs things to live. You, life, life needs things to live. Yes. Um, and so you were sent to Isarod about a week earlier before the current time frame. And you were teamed up with Clank and uh, and a, a, a death elf witch, basically like a okay, magic user, right? Um, she's very pale. Has what I assume will end up being dark hair. I don't know exactly how Tiffany has her character designed, but her and Clank, and you were sent to investigate the disappearances and they're having an attempt. Well, about three days ago or so, your group was captured. And as of right now, you are in this cave, um, bound and seated in one corner of the cave. A bedraggled man, whose name you have kind of figured out through your time here already, is named Estrum Mactum. If you can write this down, you can. Taking notes is important. Okay. Yes. Um, Estrum is E S T R U M. I got this little cheat sheet here, though, so. Yes. Leave it off? Yes, you can. Okay. Bob Seeger would say, turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to put that back on there for me. I, I put, it, put it in such a way that it's die match. I still might have to put it on there for you. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Metallica, you're going to move that. Uh, notes are important, just for reference. E S T R U M. And then the last name is M A C T O M. <coughs> he sits. Beside you. He has been there much longer than you have. Like he wasn't a part of your group. Okay. He's a prisoner too. He's a prisoner as well, yes. Okay. Uh, he reeks of expelled bodily fluids and other such viscera. Uh, and is a bit thin um, due to malnourishment. malnourishment. He, of course, looks to you desperately. This is something that kind of happens regularly from him. Uh, he's like, we need to get out of here, he whispers. Uh, he fidgets with his bindings as well, trying to release himself from the ties. Um, one of the eight goblin guards that are nearby you uh, <coughs> moves up to him and strikes him with a club. Just whoosh. He calls out in pain, but stops struggling. Each of the goblins has an abnormal red glow to their eyes. Um, and are dressed in varied garb. Some are dressed as blacksmiths, which is what most goblins are very skilled at, is smithing. Um, some are in more casual attire. But uh, they're they're very evidently not standard bandit tree clothes. Like they're not, they're they don't seem to be of the bandit type. Mm -hmm. But they're here and they're guarding you for some reason. Um, it is at this point that their boss walks in, and what's worse, you know him. You've met this gentleman. His name is Gunter, G-U-N-T-E-R. Gunter, 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 G
T U R. It's German for Garrett. Is it? Yep. Cool. Gunter Karig. K H A R A G. He is an orc. Specifically, you've met him in Isarod, the, the town. That is uh, I S A R O D, if you wish to write that down as well. Um, he is, as you understood it, while you were in the town, he is the orc. Uh, he's the chief of police. <clears throat> and he also has that distinctive and strange red glow to his eyes. He wears full plate, emblazoned with the Sartak colors, wears no helmet, he has a shaved head. Um, the description isn't necessarily needs to be written down, but you can't. And the colors are. He wields a great sword. <clears throat> He moves up to Estrum. And he says, uh, You've had enough of your weakness. And he grabs he grabs Estrum by the neck and picks him up. Very easily picks him up from the ground. Um, you can kind of hear choking noises coming from him. And he uh, grabs the midsection of it and pulls him apart like it's nothing. It's, not um, it's very brutal. Um, it's something that, like you, you, you've seen being a ranger, right? You've seen like things mauled by bears and stuff like that. This is as grotesque, if not more so. Um, they all, your, your comrades kind of give you sidelong nervous glances, and uh, it's at this point that you can, is there something that you'd like to do? You're, okay, context first. Your porg is not here. Okay. My question is, though, what options can be done? Okay. Um, given... So, you could try to break free. Right? That's not necessarily recommended because of the fact that you're surrounded by goblins and mm -hmm. things might not go great. <laughs> um, On the other hand, a bard can talk themselves out of anything. True. They don't have... Or me. Anything. Um, not me. You could... I thought... Wait. If you just want to wait, um, it's likely that other individuals will be sent to investigate this situation, and then you can kind of plan your escape accordingly. Um, if there's something that you would like to do in sort of preparation of that, like maybe begin to subtly work your binding with this, you can do that. Um, your weapons are not on you, but you do have your, like they didn't strip you of your armor or anything like that. Right? Okay. You have your armor. Your weapons are in a chest across the room. Locked. Um, it is locked, but the chest is old and wooden, and... I'm pretty sure you could punch through it. You could yeah. probably just bust through it. Yeah. So, think about what you're going to do. Okay. You have a number of options. Um, you don't want to get too aggressive yet, mm -hmm. like, just as a recommendation, mm -hmm. just because you're, there's like eight goblins around you. You're one person who's not strong <coughs> yet. Yeah. Clank, uh, you know that Clank can increase and decrease his size um, hey. at will. 
And so he is currently at, at his sort of normal size state, which is he's small. He's classified as small and normal. Now, can he, for instance, his hand, can he just make it bigger and like the rest of his body? No, it's, the, it's body? The, whole, okay. the whole thing. Yeah. So he can, now he could, and when it comes to it, he probably will um, shrink himself down and the bindings will just fall loose. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of scurry around or whatever. Um, the other, the uh, Delta Elf woman, whose name you actually don't really know, because I don't know what it is yet, uh, or I would tell you, is just kind of sitting there in silence, looking dejected. Okay. So think about what you'd like to do. We'll come back to you. If you want to interrupt, like if you think of something you want to do, just let me know. We'll Let's start picking up the, the... Okay. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, we're going to do two different roles. Do you have your character sheet? The front page of the character sheet. Okay. Okay, let's do... Time, by the way. It's time? Okay. We'll do the rolls in the next video. Be right back. Later!